Hi everyone, Hannah here for another video. Today I'm tackling exercise and recovery. Why am I tackling this question today? Well, I've been getting a lot of questions concerning exercise and recovery. For example, can you talk about exercise and recovery and what type of it you do? Also, please can you do a video about exercising and recovery? Or are you exercising in any way? Or have you ever taken a break of exercising during your recovery? All of these questions will be answered in this video, so keep watching. First of all, why is this such a frequently asked question? Well, from a young age we are told that exercise is necessary, it is good for a healthy mind, a healthy body, it's, it's the kind of medicine that's going to make you feel good. We are told that exercise is good for young and old, big and small, boys and girls. If something is wrong, exercise is the cure it all, right? Well, when you're in recovery from an eating disorder, the opposite advice is given. Stop all exercise. Eat a lot and don't do much. You need to gain weight. Well, yeah, there is truth in this. And if you're in doubt as to whether or not you should exercise, then you probably shouldn't. But it really depends in the end. Are you exercising to burn off the calories? Are you exercising because it's a compulsive need? Or are you exercising because you like it, because you want to go out and do something sociable with friends, because you want to be outside for a bit, or to de-stress after a long week? These intentions are clearly quite different, and depending on which kinds of intentions you have, you can probably make the decision as to whether or not it is a good idea to exercise. So, first some questions that you probably have to consider. Do you feel guilty if you miss a workout? Do you engage in sports specifically to lose weight or burn calories? Do you only allow yourself to eat bigger portions if you exercise or do you use it as a way to compensate for what you eat? Do you exercise because of the way it might change your body? When you exercise, do you push yourself so hard that it might even cause physical discomfort? Do you freak out if you miss an exercise routine? Do you prioritize exercise over other things such as social interactions, schoolwork? Do you experience any physical discomfort because of exercising and do you continue exercising regardless? If you answered yes to any of these questions, probably it would be best to stop exercising. Probably you're using it as a way to continue your eating disorder. And of course, this is not healthy. When you're recovering from an eating disorder, you obviously need to put on some weight and exercise is gonna make this more difficult because it does burn calories. Also, it might just prolong the mental difficulties that you're having. For example, if you exercise because of disordered beliefs, then these beliefs are gonna linger for longer. So if you can put yourself the task of stopping exercise temporarily or for however long you think is necessary, then you will realize that you won't suddenly gain lots and lots of weight. But at the same time, you will be giving your body this time to use the nutrients that you're giving it for beneficial purposes, for cell repair, for everything your body really needs as opposed to having the energy that you take in go directly to this extra stress that you're putting on your body. This extra stress on your body might also prevent these resources from going to other important vital functions or it might prevent you from, for example, getting your period back if you have lost it. Because obviously your body doesn't think you're capable of having a child if you're putting it under that much stress. And your body doesn't think it can use these resources for other things if you are causing it that much stress. So, as I said before, it might be beneficial to stop exercising during recovery. Second question. Did I stop exercising during recovery? I actually did for several years. I didn't exercise at all. And... 
I feel like emotionally, mentally, it can do quite a lot. It releases some of the tension, the anxiety, and the compulsion to keep doing something, to keep moving, will also fade if you, if you just don't listen to it. Now, even though I'm not yet weight restored, I do exercise a little bit, not compulsively. If I don't feel like it, I won't do it. Generally, about three times per week, I might do some weightlifting as opposed to cardio exercise um, because I know weightlifting for me is more to see gains, to see muscle growth and yeah, as opposed to cardio where the goal is generally to either get more fit or to burn calories, lose weight, become more slim. That is not to say I don't do cardio. I mean, I love going for walks with my dogs, which I don't consider exercise. It's mostly just a way to clear my mind, but some might consider it exercise. Sometimes I might also go for a little swim because the swimming pool here on campus is free. So why not? It's a nice way to de-stress. Except for that, if I don't have to get up for anything, I probably won't. Which is fine because I do think it's necessary for my body to recover and that I give it time to use the resources for whatever it wants to use it for. So you might be thinking, what if I want to build muscle? Can I start weightlifting or whatever now at certain amount underweight? Well, no. If you're clearly very underweight, it's best to just rest for a little bit because taxing your body can in fact destroy your muscles. So while you think you are getting toned or being healthy by going for that walk or by lifting those weights, you might be hurting your muscles and, and the rest of your body, which obviously you don't want to do. So obviously discuss this with your doctor. I myself am no medical practitioner and everyone's individual case is different. So do talk about this with your doctor. My general advice, Unlike most YouTubers, most YouTubers I've heard say to just stop exercise. My advice is, if you're in doubt, that's probably true. If you don't think you have any problem with exercise, if you are either at a right, at a right weight or with the right mindset, you know, it's, it is possible, but do talk about it with your team. Don't just go about this yourself. I did not start any exercises until my mental health coach told me you have to do these things and I'm happy she did because I I really enjoy lifting some weights and knowing I'm just I'm just doing something after all this time of being sedentary I've also been asked a question of what I think about girls having to have abs and be toned and be slim yet have a certain figure? Well, I think it's complete BS. Don't feel pressured to look a certain way. I don't think anyone's perfect. Also, if you see any photos on Instagram or wherever, it's also partly posed. Don't be fooled by what you see and certainly don't feel pressured because what's most important is, in the end, your health. How good you feel about life, about yourself, and not how toned you are, or how your abs look, or any of that. Anyway, if you feel like you are ready to start exercising again, here are the steps you need to follow. First of all, ask yourself why you want to exercise again. Do you want to do it for the right reasons, or for the wrong reasons? Second of all, ask yourself, is my body ready for this? Obviously, if you are very much underweight, if you have a lot of physical problems, if you have any injuries or any of the like, 
it might not be a great idea yet. Thirdly, ask yourself, well, would my family, would my treatment team agree to this? And why or why not? And then, obviously, do ask them. Because maybe they know better than you what is good for you. And sometimes that does happen. So do ask them. Do ask yourself why you want to do it. And then decide, is now the time? And go ahead if it is. Wait a bit if it isn't, and there's nothing bad about waiting. I didn't exercise for a very long time, and I didn't suddenly put on loads and loads of weight. It was alright. It honestly was. So whatever you choose, be sure to make the choice based on the right reasons though, and obviously keep fighting for recovery, keep fighting for yourself, and keep coming back to this channel. So this was obviously the question that has been asked the most. I hope you found my answer useful and helpful. And if you have any more questions, comment box below. I could obviously go into more detail about this topic, but for that I think you might be interested in checking out my book, which I hope to finalize during the summer holidays. In this book I talk about some personal recollections, I talk about in a lot of detail exercise and recovery and the specific reasons why it might or might not be good for you. I also talk about extreme hunger, I talk about how to overcome exercise addiction, how to face fear foods and a lot more. So I include some of my personal stories that might be a bit embarrassing, that might be a bit close and personal, and I also answer lots of questions that have come up a lot that you guys care about. So to keep posted on that, do sign up to my newsletter, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, and I'll see you next month when I'll be sharing with you some of my favorite oatmeal recipes. Keep posted on that!